flavors. My name is Brittany Allen and today I'm in Missoula, Montana. And for lunch, I've chosen Bob Marshall's Vega Pizza. Chef owner Bob Marshall created his pizza menu with an eye towards local, fresh, organic, and seasonal ingredients. This approach makes for some very unique and exciting flavor combinations and pizza toppings. I can't wait to find out more about Vega Pizza because today I've got a Vega appetite. They have a huge selection of Italian sodas here, and they come in a lot of different flavors. Basically, an Italian soda is carbonated water with some sort of fruit-flavored syrup. I decided to go with the huckleberry, because huckleberries are very prevalent in this part of the country, and I am here to savor the flavors of Missoula, Montana. And look at it, it's gorgeous. They have whipped cream on top. Oh, wow. It's wonderfully sweet. The flavor, almost blueberry-like. I love the whipped cream in there and the effervescence from the carbonated water. Ooh, this is so refreshing. This is like dessert in a glass. The name of the restaurant, Vega Pizza, sort of makes you want to say it with one of those stereotypical Italian accents, like Vega Pizza. But actually, the word Vega, B-I-G-A, refers to a starter for traditional Italian breads. Basically, it consists of yeast and flour and water. And when you go to make your bread, you reserve a portion of your starter, or Vega, for the next day's batch. And then the next day, you reserve a portion again, and so on. And so a Vega can last for years as long long as you continue to tend to it. And here, that's how they took the name for the restaurant, Vega Pizza. I decided to start with an antipasto plate. Antipasto literally means before the meal, something to, well, get your taste buds turned on. But this is amazing. This is like a meal in itself. It is gorgeous. Let me give you a walk around. Here we have roasted red peppers and some charcuterie they have some salami and pepperoni and also some prosciutto di parma which is parma ham and some mozzarella a variety of olives cherry peppers pepperoncini some provolone cheese artichoke hearts bread this is like a little buffet where to start i'm going to start with a piece of this salami look at that mm. I love salami. It like speaks to my European roots. Garlic, nice and fatty and chewy. Mmm, that is so good. And now, one of those little balls of mozzarella cheese. They put some black pepper on there. Mmm, that's yummy. And look at these little cherry peppers. Cherry peppers instantly are the same pepper that they um, make pimento out of. You know the little red that they stuff in Spanish olives? Same thing as a cherry pepper. Mmm. Mmm. I love that. Nice and briny and pickly. Kind of makes your eye do that little twitchy thing. <laughs> it is so yummy. What a great combination of flavors. I tell you what, you need to bring your friends with you when you order this or order it and make friends with all the tables around you. Wow. And now, the pizza. That's what I came here for, gourmet pizza. They have so many different interesting flavor combinations on the menu. You can also build your own from a list of ingredients that goes on and on and on. But I'm gonna go with some of the combinations that the chef owner, Bob Marshall, has put together and really get a sense for his palate. If you had a favorite Pizza, well, we do a seasonal menu, and this time of year, the flathead cherry is the is the yeah. winner. Yeah. Now, yeah. this is if I was reading a little bit, that was the one where you had access to some cherries. And yeah, had I have a gal, them. Heidi Johnson, at uh, the orchard in Flathead Lake. She grows organic cherries, and uh, when she harvests, she pits and freezes um, buckets and buckets. Of them. Okay. So I, I buy buckets from her. I store them at the uh, Big Dipper ice cream shop in their deep in their deep. <laughs> Freeze 60 below zero, and I pull up one or two a week. We make chutney. I buy uh, pork from uh, Ernie, uh, Ernie Harvey at Lifeline Farms in Victor. 
it's, wow. orga it's certified organic as well. We make our own sausage, and it, it has that pizza has smoked Gouda cheese and mozzarella as well. Here they'll let you half the pizzas, so if you can't make up your mind which one you want, you can actually have two different kinds on the same pie. I'm going to go with the flathead cherry and also the sweet potato bacon maple chipotle. I can't even begin to imagine what all of that is going to taste like, but I am so anxious to try it. The pizza is here. It looks wonderful. That crust is so nice and bubbly, but yet crisp. I think I'm going to start with this flathead cherry. Wow. Look at the color on that. It's just a beautiful purple color. I've never seen that color on a pizza before. Oh my gosh. And it's got some fresh herbs on it. Looks like parsley. And they have their homemade sausage. They make it in-house here, all organic, along with the cherry chutney. It's very hot. I'm going to wait just a minute because I always burn my tongue. I can't wait. sausage has such amazing flavor and with the sweetness of the cherries it's got some mozzarella cheese on there what an amazing combination and the fresh herbs on the finish just kind of brightens it and the crust it's thin enough to where I like it it's nice and crispy but it, yet it holds up to all the ingredients oh my gosh and that's only the half of it remember we have the sweet potato Here, you have sweet potatoes, oh my gosh, and they've been caramelized. This is the perfect brunch pizza because the sweet potatoes are caramelized, nice and sweet. The smokiness from the bacon and that chipotle maple drizzle on top will just rock your world. I've got one word for the pizzas here at Viga Pizza. Bravo! Lunch at Viga Pizza had me enjoying some of the most creative pizzas I have ever seen on a menu. Cherries on pizza? Who knew it could be so delicious? However, it was the sweet potato bacon maple chipotle pizza that served as the inspiration for today's menu. Today I'd like to share with you my recipe for maple chipotle glazed cedar plank salmon, along with savory whipped sweet potatoes topped with spiced pecans, and also a side of bacon and black truffle infused Brussels sprouts. Today we're going to begin by making the spiced pecans to go on top of our savory whipped sweet potatoes. We'll start with a half cup of chopped pecans. Now here I have two tablespoons of granulated sugar and to that I'm going to add one large pinch of cayenne pepper. Let's see if I can get all of that out of there. It wants to stick. And also one large pinch of cinnamon. Now we're going to take our spatula and sort of stir that because we want all of the spices to be evenly distributed. And then we're going to take that and pour it over the top of our pecans. We're going to put this on the stove over medium-high heat. 
Now what we're looking for here is for that sugar to start to caramelize and then as we stir the pecans they'll become wonderfully coated and candied. While that's going on we're going to work on the glaze for our salmon. One of my favorite parts of the experience at Biga Pizza was that wonderful maple chipotle drizzle he put on top of the pizza and I knew I had to come up with a recipe that incorporated those flavors, thus the glaze for today's salmon. Here I have two tablespoons of maple syrup and to that I'm going to add one tablespoon of adobo sauce. This is that wonderful sauce that comes in canned chipotle peppers in adobo, nice and smoky and spicy. Also two teaspoons of orange juice and we need a quarter teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Put that in there. And we're just going to whisk this together. And that's it. That is our glaze to go on top of the salmon. I also find that this is delicious on chicken as well. Now, we'll check our pecans. Give them a little stir. And we're going to let them continue to work. Once they're all nice and shiny and candy, we're going to take them and turn them out on wax paper to cool. Now, I'm going to take a little break, and when I come back, we're going to get started on some wonderful side dishes to go with today's menu. potatoes and we're going to boil them. When you're cutting up potatoes, make sure and try and make them all about the same size. Here I have about three inch chunks. That way they all cook evenly. And put them in a nice deep pot. That way when they start to boil, they won't boil over on you. Just enough water to cover them. And to that I'm going to add some salt to our water and I'm going to put them on the stove and boil them. When they come to a boil, we'll reduce the heat and let them simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes. Now here I have some Brussels sprouts and I like to slice them. Have you ever gone to like a fine dining restaurant or a dinner party and they serve Brussels sprouts and they were kind of al dente and you've gone to spear them with a fork and they go boom and shoot right across the table and land in somebody else's lap? It can be quite embarrassing. Don't ask me how I know. So, from now on, I always uh, slice my Brussels sprouts. And if they're small, just slice them in half. And if they're large, just slice them into like three slices. Okay, our Brussels sprouts are all sliced. We're going to put them in this pot. And we're actually just going to par cook them. And then we'll finish them off by sauteing them in some bacon and shallot. I'm going to par cook them in three-fourths cup of vegetable stock. Whenever I can use vegetable stock to infuse flavor into a dish instead of just plain water, I always do that. Now, in our Brussels sprouts, there is also a shallot. A shallot is related to both onion and garlic. It tastes like a mild onion, but it grows in clusters like garlic does. And we're just going to use one small shallot for this. Okay, that's our shallot. Now, I also have a piece of bacon, applewood smoked bacon, thick cut, that I've cut into small pieces. I'm going to render it on the stove and also get our Brussels sprouts started. When we come back, we're going to get going on our maple chipotle glazed cedar plank salmon. Welcome back. Just to recap, we made candied pecans, we made the glaze to go on our salmon, Brussels sprouts are started, bacon is rendering, and also sweet potatoes are simmering. Now, I'm going to put our shallot in with the bacon. And we want that to just saute until it's nice and tender. Now, for our salmon, I've got about seven and a half ounce portions, four portions here. And we're going to season it with a little bit of salt, just like that. And also some cracked pepper. Now, this is cedar plank salmon. And earlier, I soaked my cedar plank. And I have it on the grill warming. The grill is at 350 degrees. And... Well, you want to make sure and soak your planks long enough because you don't want them to flare up while you're cooking. You just want them to smolder nicely and it imparts that wonderful cedar aroma into the salmon. Now also on here, I'm going to put some chipotle chili pepper. 
and I've got about a half teaspoon. Now, something that I like to do is to just sort of dust it evenly, and the best way to apply that is with a little strainer like that, because otherwise it wants to clump and you can't get it evenly all over your salmon. Now, I'm going to go flip our cedar plank, put the salmon on it, and also coat our salmon with that wonderful glaze that we made. the salmon is grilling, I find this to be the perfect time to make our sweet potatoes. If we need to heat them in the microwave a little bit before we serve them, it's fine because I'd rather have them pureed now rather than pureeing them later while everything else is getting cold. Here we have our sweet potatoes that I drained and then I put them back in the pot that was warm just a little bit because it helps the liquid to evaporate. And we're just going to put those in our food processor and we'll put the lid on. And then we're going to add some butter. I've got four tablespoons of softened butter here. These are so wonderful and savory. This is the recipe that made my husband like sweet potatoes. And we'll process it. I've got a half teaspoon of cayenne pepper and also we're going to put three-fourths teaspoon of salt in there and process some more. Stir them up. Oh, they are so lovely. Just the right consistency. The butter makes them so creamy good. Okay, I'm going to remove these to a serving bowl, go back out to the grill, check on our salmon, coat it with another layer of that glaze, and then come in and put it under the broiler for just a few minutes so the glaze gets nice and caramelized. beautiful salmon. While we were at commercial, I took my Brussels sprouts and put them in with the bacon mixture and sauteed them, and I think they are perfectly finished. Now, one more final treat to our Brussels sprouts. I think they need a little seasoning. We're going to salt and pepper them just a little bit. And also, I did mention that these are black truffle-infused Brussels sprouts. What I have here is black truffle oil. Black truffles themselves are very expensive and also hard to find. Now, do you ever watch that cooking show where contestants compete and the judges, every time somebody uses black truffle oil, they go, ah, no, no, you know, and it's like, like it's the worst thing you could possibly do, and it makes you wonder why they even have it in their pantry. Well, let's talk about it a little bit. Truffle oil is basically infused olive oil. Olive oil that's been infused with black truffles. Now you have to be very careful when you're choosing your truffle oil because you want to make sure that it is indeed infused with real truffles. Oftentimes a lot of the black truffle oils, if you look at them, they say they're infused with the aroma of black truffles and they use chemicals to sort of create that black truffle aroma and if you use too much of it it can almost taste like somebody dumped their perfume into your Brussels sprouts. So you want to make sure you're using real black truffle infused olive oil. And here we're going to use it sparingly too, just about an eighth teaspoon and we'll drizzle that over the top. Give it a little stir and it just adds this real subtle kind of umami to the Brussels sprouts, which I love. Kind of an earthiness. Now, how to plate this? We're going to start with a piece of our beautiful salmon. And 
by the way, I did this skin on because I think that helps to keep it from sticking to the cedar plank. And now, some of those gorgeous sweet potatoes. I think this would make a great Thanksgiving menu for somebody who doesn't eat turkey because you get the benefit of these interesting takes on the typical size. Or it just means that sweet potatoes and Brussels sprouts aren't just for Thanksgiving anymore. And we'll top them with those lovely spiced pecans. And now, some of our Brussels sprouts. These are so delicious, you're going to love these. Love the fall colors on this plate. So pretty and delicious. And there you have it. I'm going to take a little break, clean up, and come back. We'll taste, and I'll make a wine recommendation for today's menu as well. Welcome back. The wine I chose to go with today's menu is the Barton Angostura Beaujolais. Now, a Beaujolais is a red wine, and typically you don't chill red wines, but a Beaujolais is an exception. And I love it with just a slight chill on it. Now, let's taste. Let's get into this salmon. Oh, it's so beautiful. Still slightly pink in the center, which is how I like it, because you don't want salmon dried out. Mm. That is fabulous. I love how that cedar aroma just sort of subtly works its way into the salmon. And that glaze, when you taste it by itself, well, it's sort of spicy. And it still is, but not too much. Once it starts to work with that maple syrup and caramelize, it is incredible. Mm. Now, Brussels sprouts. Notice, I speared it. Nothing went flying across the room. Mm. They're still crisp tender. I love the bacon in that umami that the truffle oil brings is fabulous. And now, sweet potatoes. They're such a gorgeous color. <laughs> those candy pecans on top are amazing. You'll find lots of uses for those. They are so delicious. That crunch is just the perfect texture that the dish needed. And the sweet potatoes, so creamy, like better than ice cream, I'm telling you. And remember we put the cayenne pepper in there? And you kind of feel the heat on the back of your tongue just enough. So, so delicious. And now, our wine. Mm. I love a Beaujolais with this. It's very fruity. In fact, there's sort of some dark cherry going on, which kind of reminds me of the cherries on the pizza at Viga Pizza. But it just has a way of tying all of these flavors together and sort of wrapping them up in a beautiful bow. Now, I would love for you to visit my website, savortheflavors.tv. While you're there, you can get the recipes that I made in today's show, as well as sign up for my free newsletter. I would love to share that with you. Now, the next time you're out in Missoula, Montana, stop in and visit my friend Bob Marshall at Bega Pizza. Tell him I said hello. In the meantime, I'd love for you to try my recipes. But either way, I hope you take time to savor the flavors.